Well, hello and welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe a podcast and uh, those of you watching on the video. I am sitting here recording. Um, I'm getting ready to jump on a plane. I'm, I'm right here at LAX um, and you can't see out my window, but I literally will be just leaving here in moments to jump on the plane and fly to New York uh, where I'll be working out of our New York office for the next couple of weeks. Uh, so I, I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different uh, this morning. I, I wrote this week's Dividend Cafe from <clears throat> here the, this morning, getting ready to get on the plane, um, about the month of December. And, and it is, it's a little bit nostalgic, not really. It, it, there are some in, investment takeaways that I really want you to kind of consider and what I'm going to talk about here. But, you know, it's, it's an odd time of year, the early part of December – is tricky because it's not just perhaps what you're looking ahead to, but I mean, I'm more projecting. I'm wanting to write and talk about recapping the year that just was, and I'm wanting to write about and talk about the year ahead and various, you know, forward looking predictions and forecast and, and strategic decisions we're making on behalf of client portfolios. And yet we're kind of too early into December here to, to get ahead. And so you have like the next few weeks still where you could taste the end of the year. You're clearly well into the holiday season. Um, and yet we're not really there yet. And, and we want to be able to get further along with the uh, ending of 2020 in particular uh, before we, we tie a bow around 2020. And yet we also um, want to have as much time to fully consider and work through our, our forecast into 2021 before we start articulating that. And so it isn't like we're in this sort of purgatory time of year because there's plenty happening in the world, in the economy and markets. Um, we, there's always a risk in me saying this before uh, market day. I'm recording at you know, about 5.45 in the morning on on a Friday, and as I'm sitting here talking, the market futures are up 100 points, um, and the market's up a little over 300 or so on the week. Uh, so it looks like December's off to a pretty good start, and that's on the on the follow up to November being, you know, obviously a very big month for equity markets. But who knows what could happen? But you know, I was thinking about that this morning. Um, it, this is not really all that different. 2020 is a very unique year for all the obvious reasons. And my anticipation and my enthusiasm for talking about 2021 is probably heightened this year, partially because I think there is a sense where everyone wants to be able to move forward. We want to look forward. We want to think about a post-COVID economy. We want to think about kind of getting just past this year that, that has been so difficult in so many different ways. But the reality is that every year, I think there is the same dynamic in early December. And by early, I mean the first two to three weeks that you're not really at the end of the year yet. And yet there's things that are happening that need to be digested, understood, dealt with like any normal week. And, and in my kind of trip down memory lane in Dividend Cafe this week, I was thinking about all of the Decembers of my career where it does seem like a lot. Uh, of the old traditions are sort of gone. And some of them are by our kind of lifestyle choice. Like uh, uh, Jolene and I had years early on in, in my career where we were married, but didn't necessarily have kids yet from what I you know. I mean, this is definitely before kids, but where we had some holiday event we were at like every single night. And, and those were just exhausting times. I'm way too, old and grumpy and, and introverted to ever even think about that kind of thing. Again, you know, all the COVID realities, notwithstanding, put that aside, but even apart from that, we, we normally would do like one or two events now where we used to have, you know, 20 or so. Right. I, I um, think back to the, my years of Morgan Stanley and, and there was the restaurant downstairs from our building that I was uh, a pretty frequent participant of for my lunch meetings. And in the month of December, I would do a, a big meeting there like every single day and, and it, with clients or with team members and, and, and other colleagues or money managers or whatever. 
and and it was just this this really um, uh, excessive caloric uh, festivity, and it was a lot of fun. Um, but but I it doesn't feel like that was ancient history. Um, it was really a marker of the time of year, and it was very holiday ish, and it was and it it was delicious, <laughs> but but it was also um, special to December, and and those you know now it, it just feels like a regular work time there you know there it used to be i think that clients were were a lot busier in december and focused on their holiday events and there were less meetings that were normal portfolio and planning meetings and so forth and now it just seems like the days are filled with the regular things and and so that's partially just kind of stage of life stage of the business but december um is very normal as a market month in this sense. There's nothing unique about December as it pertains to markets. Um, forgive me for, for getting distracted, but as I'm sitting here recording, I'm looking up at this TV in the suite I'm sitting in and uh, it, I'm flying to New York and I'm seeing, it looks like some snow covered fun waiting for me out in, in New York. Um, so maybe that white Christmas fun of December will, will be there in my destination. But here, here's the thing um, I'm getting at. We talk in our business a lot, and I don't, but it is very commonly said um, that there is these trends that exist around, around various calendar themes. I don't believe in it in any month of the year, and I think it's dangerous. It's not, it's first of all, silly. Uh, at best, one could maybe come up with certain correlations. I don't actually believe that could even happen, but they most certainly couldn't come up with causation, which makes it meaningless. But even in December, you can't get either, okay? Because I, I, I go back through the various Decembers of my career, um, Last year, markets were rallying hard in December, and that was a bit of a surprise because they had already rallied hard in, in October, November of 2019. The year before, it was a bloodbath in December, and in fact, on actual Christmas Eve day, it was, was one of the worst market days of the year, and it really impacted kind of my, my holiday week at dealing with nervous clients and, and the realities of a, a big sell-off. That was on the already from uh, October, November that it sold off quite substantially. And the S&P actually went down almost 20% for that quarter. It got down on Christmas Eve to a 19.8% drawdown. And, and so we've had a really big December here and there. We've had really uh, awful Decembers here and there. And we've had a bunch of blah Decembers. But over the years, um, the fiscal cliff, which I point out in Dividend Cafe, it was actually although the ancient history of eight years ago, it was uh, Joe Biden, who was then vice president, and Mitch McConnell, who was then Senate minority leader, now majority leader, the two of them working out the fiscal cliff tax compromise, and markets went skyrocketed higher going into 2013 um, around the extension or permanence of the Bush tax cuts that had been set to expire. Um, you go back, of course, to obvious stuff like the financial crisis. De December was an awful month, but everything was just awful. September, October, November. It did, in January and February stayed awful. That was in the midst of that six-month period where the U.S. economy was utterly uh, collapsing and, and financial markets were utterly collapsing. Um, so but this isn't a, a super profound point, but it's one that deserves re remembrance. A lot of things have Seem in my December experience seem to have changed in the, my my lunch schedule and my and my evening festivities um, and the intensity of the workload has really gotten much higher in December's than I remember it being say 15 or 20 years ago. But other things have not changed, and that is that it still feels like the holidays. There's still the lights and the and the candy coming into the office and the and the Christmas trees set up and there's a, this sort of um, holiday festive cheer in the air. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. And that's sort of a constant. And so with markets, you get kind of a similar thing. There's stuff that's just different year by year, and there's stuff that is constant and and very and very similar. And in this case, 
the constant is that markets don't care what month it is. They care what it is that's actually happening from a catalytic standpoint around earnings, around the news cycle, around monetary policy, around the economy. And, and when you look at those things, that's where people are reaching out saying, okay, well, those things will then affect markets, but they don't seem to be affecting markets because those things seem negative and markets seem to be doing well. And that's where I'll kind of end things. Those things are not negative. Um, the reality is that markets are well aware that some form of a stimulus relief bill is coming. The question is whether or not it's coming in December or February, whether it's going to be 900 billion or 1.3 trillion. There's definitely marginal questions that are unanswered, but there is the sense in which some of these governmental fiscal relief things are pending. There is a not pending, but certain and current state to the monetary stimulus side. Zero interest rates, not going anywhere. The equity risk premium is very, very significant as people can obtain a higher return into risk assets um, adjusted for risk uh, than they can in, in the rate markets and safe money and risk-free monies. Um, and so I think that the question should not be why are markets performing as they are, but why wouldn't they? And the uh, bad news that is current is soon to be passed. And in the meantime, markets do not as, as uh, sad as this is, or, or um, I, I don't want to say crass, but seemingly insensitive as it is, because it most certainly is not. Markets don't price themselves off of the um, employment levels uh, in the job market either. Markets price themselves over expectations of future profits and really the future profit outlook and really the valuations of future profits discounted into the present is very bullish right now. Um, now, a lot of that bullishness may be already reflected in prices. I think it is very much reflected in some prices not as much in others. And that's what we have to unpack going into next year. But really this December, I think markets are doing what they do in any other month and in any December of any year, which is uh, pricing in the realities of the moment. And in this particular moment there, um, you, you see some of the, the negative events and you see certainly the, the headlines around them. Um, and yet it is really uh, quite clear how the path could change very soon. And that's what I think markets are, are looking ahead to. So I hope that there's some kind of takeaway from this that makes sense to you and, and, and that your month of December will not be filled thinking about markets and the economy and profit outlook nearly as much as mine will be. I'm going to try to do a lot of the things this December that I do any other December. Uh, uh, a whole lot of time, my family, uh, the, you know, New York, by the way, is absolutely one of the greatest um, Christmas season cities in the world. And there is no one on this planet that can keep me from enjoying that, um, what, regardless of what is happening with the, with the pandemic and so forth. I, I work very hard to not let my joy be a byproduct of circumstances. And I intend to get the most with my family out of this holiday season. And I hope you'll do the same wherever that is possible and however that, whatever that looks like for you. Um, I'm gonna be spending next weekend uh, diligently and in total isolation working on my uh, 2021 business planning. That's something that I've spent a weekend in December doing every year as long as I can remember. Um, the, the solitude of where I'll be out at our house in East Hampton is, is going to be the same, even though the setting is going to be different from where I normally have done it out in the desert here in Southern California. But my point is that there's some traditions that I'm holding on to and other things kind of change. And I guess that's the nature of life. But um, as far as these market lessons, I sure love the chance to talk to you more about it. If you have any questions, please reach out. I hope this has been somewhat helpful in your little uh, stint this week in the Dividend Cafe. Uh, with that, I'm going to go jump on this plane, and I will see you next week from New York City. Um, reach out anytime. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for listening to and watching the Dividend Cafe.